Welcome back to my channel and in this video we will be testing out different shutter speed settings on the Sony ZV Eaton to find out which one is the best for catalyst browse stabilization. So the camera is handheld. Um, I'm on 11 millimeters on my Tamron 11 to 20 and my current settings are f2.8 shutter speed 1 over 200 ISO 100. I'm using an ND filter as well. So yeah, I'm on 24 frames per second. This is way beyond the standard 180 degree shutter rule. So with that out of the way, let's start with the tests. Let's start with the 180 degree shutter rule. So 180 degree shutter rule is simply shutter speed of 1 over 2 times your frame rate. So my current frame rate is 24 frames per second. So that should be 1 over 48th of a second shutter speed. But this camera doesn't have it. The closest one is 1 over 50. So this is how uh, the footage look like, looks like. Looks This is how the footage looks like when stabilized on Catalyst Browse using the 180 degree shutter rule. How is it? I'm assuming there's a lot of motion blur here. So now I'm on a shutter speed of 1 over 100th of a second. Um, it's two times faster than the previous one so there should be less motion blur. So in case you're wondering, I'm not gonna be testing each and every shutter speed setting because this video might take forever to finish. So let's just do the, those increments. So 1 over 50, 1 over 100, what do you think? So ideally, um, the less motion blur that you have, the better your shutters, the better the less browser stabilization result is. So now I'm back to 1 over 200th of a second shutter speed. This is twice as fast as the previous one, but four times faster than the 180 degree shutter rule. So the 180 degree shutter rule is there so that um, you will have the cinematic motion blur that we've been used to. Unfortunately, for Catalyst Browse purposes, that's not a good idea because the stabilization algorithm or the stabilization prefers to have less motion blur. So I see many YouTubers recommend this setting, 1 over 200. Um, based on my experience, this is a very nice setting too. Um, the image is clean and stable. So they say faster shutter speeds is better. But let's see. I'm now on 1 over 400th of a second shutter speed. I had to remove my ND filter because um, it's gonna be so dark. So this is 8 times faster than the 180 degree shutter rule. There will be almost no motion blur I think. Um, with this high of a setting, we will have very sharp images, sharp frames. However, there's no more chance of anything cinematic occurring and with respect to motion blur i'm now on one over 800th of a second shutter speed um this is very very fast this is 100 this is 16 times faster than the 180 degree shutter rule um I imagine there's almost no motion blur, almost. Um, the challenge with this is that you have to start cranking up your ISO. So all of the previous tests that you've seen, I was an ISO 100, the base ISO. Um, that's the cleanest image. But as you make your shutter speed faster, to compensate for it, you have to um, increase your ISO too. So that's gonna introduce a lot of noise image, a lot of image noise. So, if you're not familiar with what um, ISO shutter speed and aperture do, those are the three elements of those are three elements of the exposure triangle. Check out my video about it. So yeah. 
So nighttime low light test. Um, shutter speed 1 over 200. F 2.8 still, and then ISO 3200. It's a little dark. So there is that. So if I want more brightness, I have to adjust the ISO, the shutter speed. So I'm gonna try the 180 degree shutter rule and see how that's gonna look like. So I'm now on the 180 degree shutter rule, almost 180 degree shutter rule. Um, 1 over 50 shutter speed. Um, yeah, let's compare. What do you think? Which is better? Um, this one is brighter, but the other one has less motion blur, so we'll see. Okay, so some final words about this test. So I was kind of surprised actually by the results. So I thought that following the 180 degree shutter rule when using Catalyst Browse would lead to quite unusable footage, but I'm, I'm very happy to be proven wrong. So you can see the motion blur difference between 1 over 50 and 1 over 200. Yeah, I can live with that. So I'm glad I did this experiment to validate um, some of the claims on YouTube. I agree, 1 over 200 of a second is, is a good setting. I'm probably gonna stick to using that filming in daylight and I'm gonna use an ND filter. Now as for the 1 over 50 or the 150 degree shutter rule, I am definitely going to use that during low light situations because it's usable. Unless you're going to use the footage for professional shoots for your clients, it's probably not a good idea. I would probably be using a gimbal for that or any sort of mounting or stabilization device. But for vlogs, I think the quality is is good enough well it's good enough for me maybe my standards now are not yet so much up there but for for this type of content for travel vlogs definitely i'm gonna do that so if you enjoyed this video and learned something from it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so this is rp gutierrez signing off see you again on another video bye